All right, this is Jim Crashers. We're doing a one-on-one -on -one with my man, Casey Smith. How are you today, Casey? I'm good. We're Thank definitely, you. yeah, glad to have you, man. We met at the Spar Stars event at Commerce Casino. Casey is the 185 belt holder from that promotion. Such an awesome thing. Uh, we talked a little bit even before the cameras were running. That fight was a, a by no means easy. It was a war. There was a give and take every round. We're not sure where it was going to go, but in the end, you pulled it off with that belt. I remember you were saying about that rear naked choke. You almost had it sunk in. Yeah, I was surprised. He uh, he reached up and he was able to pull pull the pull the arm down and get out of the choke and turn around and face me. I uh, I thought I had it sunk in. Like um, all 85 percent, 90 percent of the people that I roll with, if you sink that in underneath the chin like that, they're gonna tap. Yeah, I was pretty surprised that he was able to hold off and get through the round. It was. It was a it was a battle. Yeah, it was kind of amazing that he survived that because your arms are such, uh, they're long, you're lanky, you're ready to sink things in real quick. You know what I mean? You didn't have to fight for it. It was already under the chin. So some people's impression was that it was done. Yeah, and, and jujitsu. Yeah, jujitsu is my sport too. That's my uh, that's my go-to uh, martial art when it comes to training. I'm in the jujitsu gym more than any other gym. So very cool. I like to hear that. Uh, so that brings me to the segment, uh, the lowdown on your get down. Tell me about your fighting style and how it has evolved. Okay. Yeah. So um, my fighting style, I would say, is jujitsu based. I started out in high school uh, wrestling. I was a uh, 215s in high school. I went uh, third, third in our league, which was the Sunset League, right? Um, Division one, uh, right here in Huntington Beach is where I went to high school. And then um Edison or Huntington? Honey no Fountain Valley High oh, School. Oh Fountain Valley, gotcha. yeah. Yeah, we were, we had a powerhouse over there. Our wrestling team was really strong. Uh wrestling coach uh Brad Woodbury. Brad Woodbury was Coach yeah. Rosales when I was a kid. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I think I've seen his name on the um the CIF board. Yeah, yeah. yeah in there. So uh, yeah, th we uh, I have a good base with my wrestling and then it turned into jujitsu when I got out of high school. And then I wanted to do the martial arts thing, so I, I started doing boxing under Coach Aubin, who was a Jamaican, ex-Jamaican Olympian. Wow, that's a unique uh, place to come from for any martial art. What was his background? Yeah, boxing. Yeah, oh, he, boxing was him. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense from Jamaica. There's a lot yeah. of British influence over there, so yeah. you picked up some boxing after you had the wrestling. Yep, picked up boxing after the wrestling, and then um, now I'm just now getting into some uh, Muay Thai. So. It's making a full circle. Um, I keep an open mind. I'm willing to practice and train under anything that I think is going to make me a better fighter, a better cage fighter. So the, the main idea is to train on the martial arts, and, and that's the main sport right now. I, I kind of strayed away from the jiu-jitsu competitions because I started out doing a lot of jiu-jitsu competitions and um, no gi jiu-jitsu, gi jiu-jitsu. I stopped at my blue belt. And uh, now it's pretty much all focused on MMA. That's cool. That's a that's a cool beginning to have to come from wrestling, boxing, then mixing it up a little bit with MMA. Obviously, learning some kicks now. If you got Muay Thai in there too, yeah, you're gonna have to have that in your arsenal if you're out there, you know, seeking to become a pro fighter. Yeah. But even at the amateur level, man, they were throwing hard. Yeah. So you got to have some kind of base, in in uh, not just the striking styles and the grappling, but kicking as well. Yeah. So it's amazing what you did and what you accomplished with what you're telling me so far because I thought uh, you were going to tell me there was even more of a background with striking, but it sounds like uh, not too much. You just put it together. Yeah, I, I rely a lot on my grappling. I I see uh, a lot of strengths that I have in grappling. I mean, I'm just now starting to get comfortable with um, my hands and my kicks, like you said. Like the first three fights for amateur fighters, we have our shin guards. Yeah. So now that I've had my shin guards off for the last two fights, the um, kicking is a lot more uh, lethal than it was when the shin guards were on. So got to be aware of that always. And um, I mean, I found I found that I'm getting really. Uh, adapt to the quicks fast because I've got strong and lengthy oh, legs. Yeah. Like you said. How tall are you? Six two. Six two, almost six three. So you got a six two baseball bat coming at you when he <laughs> turns his hips and throws a foot up in the air. That thing's coming at you. The shin is meant to knock you out. So yeah, yeah. Just a dangerous dude. Watch out for Casey when he's throwing kicks. <laughs> Thank you. Seriously, I've seen it, so I know. Um, so another segment I like to bring up is our fighter focal point. 
Where do you get your motivation to fight? What is it that drives you? Uh, well, what actually got me into jujitsu was uh, my girlfriend. She's uh, her nephew has two kids with Brian Ortega, and he's uh, obviously fighting for the championship right yeah. now. And he's... he would almost have it if things didn't have transpired the way they did over this past weekend but a yeah. gentleman and a local boy yeah he was out there in hawthorne we love the guy yeah torrance actually torrance, okay. yeah but yeah he's uh he makes it all over the place he's he's at the gracie headquarters all the time right here in orange county and then um yeah so he's the reason why i got into gracie jiu-jitsu and uh yeah i i he used to talk to talk about fighting and mma before he was even on tv during like Thanksgiving dinners and like family get-togethers yeah. and then going and seeing him do what he did on TV that's like the dream right yeah I was like wow this guy he's like so high up there now it's like pretty crazy to imagine it but, happened like, so fast so yeah you're right we're all watching him we've all known of him because of his grappling I mean, yeah knew and you followed especially if you're within the Gracie circles Brian Ortega is the man yeah you know and if you're out there in the South Bay uh, you're probably rolling with him at your home school because he does know a lot of people yeah. and he does uh, get some roles in with his partners and friends yeah. and, and everybody's like a family out there so we've ran into him so we know exactly how that goes that's a cool inspiration to have yeah. is there anybody that um, inspires you from the MMA world um, yeah uh, Tito Tito Ortiz actually when I was a child before even Brian Ortega was was uh, my hero Tito Ortiz was my hero I, I used to watch him when i was a kid well he comes from our neighborhood you know yeah huntington beach yeah so it makes sense yeah ex- probably run into him over there i lived in the harbor forever so he's around the block for me all the time yeah i see him all the time actually he comes into our jujitsu school and he's that's where he was getting ready for his chael sonnen fight got it so it's pretty uh crazy that he went from being my hero to like me training with him all the time yeah you're you're the right size for that you know what yeah I mean? yeah big guy so it makes sense yeah exactly so um yeah when he was getting ready for the chael sonnen fight now he's gonna use our gym again to get ready for the um chuck liddell fight yeah the trilogy yeah that's i'm excited for that one yeah. that'll be a really good fight well you know it's there's so much going on in mma so uh to keep the viewers interested i think these nostalgic fights are unique yeah you know? it might have been you know 10 years ago there were 12 15 years ago that these things happened we we're all excited but uh we want to see them again you know what i mean we want to see what that result of all that training and these guys sticking to it i mean chuck liddell's been retired for quite some time and now he's yeah. back in the mix yeah exactly you know? it's kind of cool for people that didn't get to see him the first time he's back exactly and then all those questions can be finally answered between them sure. you know like because I know Tito's actually planning to stand with him instead of because they're obviously Chuck Liddell's going to be standing with him. So certainly, will. yeah, that's usually the way it goes with him. But Tito's yeah. back and all these things that he kept him out. And exactly. Gosh, I, it makes you wonder if he's the same guy he once was, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes. So well, we'll, I guess we'll see. Exactly, we'll see. And it's not going to be a UFC fight either. I think it's going to. Yeah. Be, yeah, it's going to be like Golden Maybe, Boy promotion. Yeah, there's yeah. a different promotion that's putting it on. But hey, whoever, right? Yeah, exactly. Ready to watch fights. It's all good. Yeah. So what do you think about when you're training? What keeps you focused, especially when you're doing your fight camps now, preparing for your fights? Um, I think what really deeply motivates me is, like, I came from my, uh, I didn't come from, like, too affluent of a background. Like, my mom, she was working, uh, she was working, like, six, 12-hour shifts a week just to keep food on the table for me, my brother, and my sister. So, uh, just, like, to get out there and to make something out of myself you know whether it's fighting or my career or education i just feel like i'm gonna have to put myself fully into it to to really get out there and like i yeah i I didn't come from much like we were really poor growing up and now now i feel like uh it's my time like as a as an adult you know to to really make my mark you know doing what i want to do and and I chose fighting, and that's what I feel like I'm good at and and talented at. And it's it's going to be a long journey, but I'm ready. I'm ready for it. You know. Yeah, no, those are inspirational words, especially to young people that are watching. You're a self-made man. Oh, you made the choice to get out there and do it. I know it takes a team to carve you out and make you the fighter that you are, but you have to choose to actually get in there and do it every day. Oh yeah. Something yeah. that we even discussed before this show is he's got to get out of here and go train he trained this morning he's ready to get back into it so yeah. i know the focus is there 
I know that the drive is there, um, and then you're dedicated because we're even talking about, hey, what are you doing tonight? So I know you're, you're driven. You want to get in yeah. there whether your training partners are there or not. Someone's going to be there to spot with you. Yep, and I always, always keep in the back of my mind, like, uh, what's the other guy doing? Like, he's obviously doing it two a day, you know? How long is he in the gym, you know? That's, yeah. that's like, uh, the little uh, burner that helps helps you, like, when you, you want to be, uh, you want to take a day off or take it easy on yourself or, you know. You, have a donut. Yeah, have a donut, <laughs> you know? Is that other Probably guy having a donut? not wise, yeah. Yeah, I always picture the other guy not having a donut. So yeah. <laughs> That's good. No, you always keep your edge that way. Yeah, there you it go. Sounds like you have it all planned out really well. I like that. Um, how do you unwind from the grind? What is it that you do outside of MMA? Uh, I actually, all my relaxing is done at home, you know. I really try to keep it um, low-key. I don't go out and uh, hang out with the guys or anything like that because uh, usually that ends up losing sleep or yeah. or maybe having a drink or two, you know, and obviously that doesn't mix well with training 40 hours a week, you know, or however long it comes out to, but it's... Uh, I'll go to the store, get a good dinner, you know, pick a movie, and then just sleep in. Keep it simple. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to tell you, I was in the elevator at Commerce Casino, and this beautiful blonde comes walking in, nice dress. <laughs> she has no idea where she's going, and uh, almost gets off on, like, the third floor or something. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. I think you're going to the fights, and it's the next floor. And she's like, oh, my God. <laughs> I, don't, I had no clue who she is. I'm just putting it together. I didn't know you then either. And uh, I pointed her to the fights, you know, I don't know, we high-fived or something, she, she moved along. And then I noticed as uh, you take your belt after your bout, that that was your chick. Yeah, yeah. It was really cool. And then, uh, you know, shortly thereafter, we have Casey over uh, to our area where we conduct our interviews. Uh, you can catch that on YouTube under Jim Crashers because we did the interview right after he got his belt from belt from Sparstar, uh, MMA at the 185 yeah. uh, pounds. But... Uh, Interestingly enough, I get home and uh, Krista Ria, who is my daughter-in-law, says to me, dude, did you interview Casey Smith? I'm like, <laughs> I think so. I interviewed a lot of people, but let me go back and check. Oh, uh, yeah. And bam! She's like friends with, with your girl and, uh, you know, yeah, obviously actually, that got you here. I remember Krista from high school, Fountain Valley. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, my girlfriend, she, we've been together seven years now. And yeah. She's the reason why I go to GB Costa Mesa because her dad's also a black belt under uh, the same my same professor Scott Carr. No there. way, you gotta yeah. talk to your old man now. Yeah, I Rod. Hear the whole story. Yeah, his name's Rod Roberts, and then his brother also trains out of with uh, Brian Ortega in right uh, in Torrance. Yeah, I can't think of his name right now. I gotta now, roll but. with you guys. Gotta make but yeah, this happen, it's, you know? it's a cool little family we got over there that, at Custom yeah. Mesa. It's it's getting bigger and bigger. It seems like every month, but uh, yeah, we there's a there's a solid crew there that uh, we all stick together and we all take jujitsu very seriously. And it's like a uh, we try and make it as cerebral as possible because I've obviously learned how to use my strength and uh, size yeah. as an advantage, but um. The one thing uh, a lot of people don't know how to use is their brain when they're out there rolling. So uh, Sure, and it gives you longevity because if you're 100% with muscle uh, going into it, you're going to injure yourself, injure your partner, and then yep. you don't have very much to go on for training. Yeah. But if you're rolling, you know, and you know the people you're rolling with and constantly going for things and trying new things, you know how to execute a lot better. Yep, yep, totally, 100%. I love that. I love that you understand that because especially in the fight game, the last thing you need is an injury. You know, oh yeah. I mean, everything's hand to hand. It's combat. We all understand that. But uh, how you go about your preparation for a fight, and then how you conduct yourself in between those fight camps too, can affect whether or not you're going to be fight ready. Yep, lots of ice. That's my uh, my go-to is ice baths. That's good. Yeah, we have a uh, we have a little ice bath at the jujitsu school, and I'm in that thing like every other day. What about <laughs> the uh, the little frozen tank? What do they call those? Oh, things? those. Cryogenic, cryogenic yeah, have therapy. Done that? I have done that, but um, it's not the same as a, a nice bath. It's like a, I feel like it's superficial. It's it gets the cold it's superficial, like it's it's nice to do right before if you're gonna go training. Like you yeah. feel like you could warm up after and you'd have a good training practice. But I feel like ice baths, like is it 
gets you so cold that you're just done for the day. There's no going and training out. Well, it's direct, right? It's ice on the skin. You can't hide from it, right? Yeah, no, you it's... Know? The cryo is more of a temperature change. It takes a little while to get into your, your body. Oh, okay, yeah. You know? But yeah. I, it's still cold, nonetheless. Yeah, well, yeah, it's really cold. So about the ocean? You jump in the ocean once in a while? You oh, surf? yeah. Yeah, I, I do surf, but uh, not as much as I should. But, uh, yeah, the ocean is an awesome place for... Uh, for healing actually the, the yeah. salt water and everything salt water and, and the temperature too i mean even though it's 58 degrees it's not freezing by any means people that are not accustomed to the ocean get hypothermia when they jump in yeah and the rest of us our body just heats up naturally so i think taking the ice baths your body's already prepped for a temperature change and how it can warm up on its own yeah you know? the blood already starts flowing even though other people kind of shuts down you know mm -hmm. and they start to get the shivers and that's the first sign of uh, hypothermia yeah so it's good it's cool that you do that's great recovery yeah oh know? yeah and then active recovery is important too so maybe surfing or other stuff in your free time just keeps mm -hmm. you going you know yep super you don't get all locked up you know you stop people that stop doing anything active in between training and fighting yeah i find that they they uh they get a lot more tense and the joints lock up and you know they don't stay active so you got to fight it out a little harder yeah and active recovery is always important I even agree. if you're like um taking a couple days off before your fight like uh my professor he believes in staying away from training for like a week sure but staying active so like maybe go play some basketball that's still competitive Super it's important. still gonna break a sweat but you're not gonna get dehydrated or something like that well you take a lot of punches too and now there's a focal point on uh trauma to the head yeah concussions yeah the long-term damage we're hearing about it now with with max holloway we don't know exactly where it's at i'm sure we'll hear soon um so many fighters before that that have been affected by head trauma especially boxers so yeah, yeah maybe that resting maybe you don't have to man up the week after a fight you just oh, yeah. went to battle so taking some time and healing is super important but be active yeah it's a tough balance like whether you know if you're if you're taking enough time off or if you're training enough like like, especially if you're getting ready for a fight, you want to be in the gym as much as possible. But yeah. are you really doing some damage to to the motivation of the camp or the longevity of your fight career? Like, are you doing some damage that you can't turn back, that you're not going to heal from? You don't know. Like, some I believe in taking a day off once a week. Some people don't believe. They think that they have to go train every day. I think that it's good to at least take one day to just go do what you need to do in your life to sure. to keep all the motivation levels high, you know. Stop the burnout of any sort, right? Yeah, because you come plateau. back. Plateau. Yeah, exact, exactly. Yeah, plateauing, that's a big issue. Mm -hmm. You have to, you always have to find what you're doing fun. Otherwise, you're not going to give it that 110%. And, sure. And if you're going there every day and it's grueling and you're leaving with a bloody nose and bruises all over the place, it's not that fun, you know? Yeah, it takes <laughs> the fun out of it. Yeah, exactly. So. Very cool, man. So what's on the horizon? Anywhere we can see you uh, up and coming and any promotions? What's going on right now? So I got the title defense with Spar Stars on the 25th at Commerce Casino again. I'm fighting um, some uh, some dude out of Huntington Beach. His name's Noah Christie. Noah Christie out of Todd Medina School. Yep, Todd Medina. <laughs> yeah, that's Interesting, because I know he follows you, because I've been looking at your stuff, and I'm like, Noah's liking his stuff, so he must know him. Oh, and okay. I figured Huntington Beach, Fountain Valley, you guys know each other, so. No, I don't him. know him. I don't know. I think I'm a couple years older than him, so. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I think that's probably where the misconnection is, because I know a lot of people from Huntington Beach. Yeah, it's yeah, actually I a do small too, so obviously we're connected, but, you know, not directly, but, you know, Yeah. Happened. Yeah, it's a small world out there, surprisingly. Yeah. So Yeah, that's for sure. So Noah Christie coming up on August 25th. My man Casey Smith here at Sparstar MMA Commerce Casino. Excited. Tony T-Bone Steaks bringing it to you. Yeah. The man. They have an awesome promotion, Spar Don't Stars. They? Yeah, Don't they I really, I love fighting for them. If you want to see the best up and coming from LA, Orange County, San Diego, Riverside, whatever it may be, Ventura, we see a lot of Oxnard guys out there. Yep. Uh, mixing it up, come to Spar Stars. It was standing room only the night Casey fought. And when I say standing room, it means because all the seats were taken and everybody else just had to cram into the room. But every viewpoint, every standing point, chair, cage side, ring side, whatever it may have been, was good. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was awesome. Yeah, it was a fun night. It, it really was. It certainly was, man. I just love Tony and, and the crew at Sparstar and the way they put on things. Clearly, my man here is ready to step it up and defend his belt uh, against Noah Christie with uh, Todd Medina's Academy in Huntington Beach. Um, we've talked about this before, but I want you to give a shout-out to your coaches 
and then your social media so people know where to find you. Okay, yeah, uh, social media, I only really do Instagram, so it's Casey Smith 714 and then um, my jiu-jitsu school is GB, which is Gracie Baja Costa Mesa and under Scott Carr. And then uh, my Muay Thai's classic fight team out of Fountain Valley. And uh, the head instructor over there is Tyler Wombles. Okay. Yeah, so... Um, cool, yeah. man. You're a busy guy. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. barely got you in here, but now I'm excited. Now I got to hear Noah's side of things. I don't know, but I want to find out what he thinks about the fight coming up. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. I'm excited. Uh, it's going to go down. I think he's a tough kid. He's probably one of my toughest opponents I've had so far, which is always good for me because I like bigger and better challenges and setting bigger goals, and this kid's the next one to go. So, I love it, man. Well, thank you so much for coming today, Casey. Uh, again, check out Casey over at Gracie Baja Costa Mesa if you want to roll with him. They're over there, always looking for new blood to roll. So if you want to learn jiu-jitsu, hit these guys up. Uh, if you want to see him in action, Spar Star MMA, Commerce Casino, August the 25th against Noah Christie. And we are the Gym Crasher, so like us, subscribe to us, and share this link. We're on YouTube, we're on Facebook Live, and eventtv.global. Thank you again, and check us out Wednesday nights at 8. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate it so yeah, much. Yeah, no problem.